Judy is an artist based in Vancouver and Berlin. Um, her practice revolves around the, the question of how we, as social beings, understand our relation to the material world through the visual. Um, so the, the works look at the, the tension between the lived experience and the representation of it. So uh, Judy uses uh, various media technologies as well as writing to, to think about these contradictions. And I think I'll stop it right here. <laughs> Thank you for having me here. Nice to talk to you all. I wrote down my talk, some of it, to make it a little easier maybe for the translation. Um, and there we go. Sometimes I will read it and sometimes I probably just go off reading it. But it's pretty short that I have to read. Um, I just first show you a few images. Um, no, first I'm going to say this. Um, the understanding of video, I work in video, as a recording medium, a medium for retention, yeah, recording and retention, can sometimes obscure its foundational power as a mode of sight. So I mean, rather than recording, just see. Um, I started using live cameras uh, a lot in 2009 when I did a work about the court of law. I made this seven channel four hour long court case and with it a larger, more complex installation uh, which interwove a lot of references and inspired by the use of closed circuit cameras in new courtrooms, I started to use live cameras. But my aim in using them was to create an experience that couldn't be testified to, that was too complex to say, um, this is exactly what happened to me, to, to, to have a legal description of your experience. So, there you see one camera, and there's a few around, and on the monitors you just saw what was happening in the exhibition room. So, um, when I use live cameras, which means I'm not recording, but I'm mostly just feeding back the image back into the space from which it comes, when I, when I use live cameras, I feel that the question of sight, or who is seeing, the power of the frame, of the difference between the lens and the eye, electronic time and body time come to the foreground. I try to hold my technology, uh, this is something else. Oops. Let's go to some more pictures. Oops. Oh yeah, I showed it in Seoul. There it is in Seoul. Uh, I try to hold my technology um, at a point of oscillation between its function for surveillance, objectification and control in tension with its more cinematic, lyrical and surprising potentials. It is liveness, it is liveness itself that invites contingency, chance, ha chance happenings and these ameliorate the totalizing aspects of technology. By concentrating on camera motion, which I also work with, I aesthetically ask if the live frame can open a view and replace judgment with curiosity. Let me see if I have some more pictures of this thing. I've shown it a few times. Anyways, I'll go on with my little statement. 
The use of the camera as a substitute for the eye, even for a viewer, it could substitute for the eye, but also the whole body of the viewer. When it works, I feel it distances ourselves from reality for a minute, a second, in a way that can actually freshen perception, that creates a gap in which presence comes under question. Questions like, is that me? Is that you? Is that here? Is it now? Which seem like good questions to me. Questions that break open our own militant beliefs that reality is as it seems to us. This looping back of a piece of a situation into itself could be considered recursive. The openness, in the case of my work with live cameras, means I don't know for sure what will fill the frame and what might be considered contingent. Uh, these two terms are central to a book by an author named Yukhi, and his new book is called Recursivity and Contingency. And I thought I would show this really crazy, difficult slide. Where did it go? Don't look at this. Oh wait, where did I lost it? How do I get out of this? I have to go back to my, I have to go back to my, my pause. So I think that Yukui might be part of our program at some point, so I thought it would be okay to bring this quote in, even though it's only me trying to understand this quote still. Um, it won't hurt us. If we don't understand it, it will still be totally fine. This is the quote, uh, recursivity is not merely mechanical repetition. It's characterized by the looping movement of returning to itself in order to determine itself. While, typo, while that very movement is open to contingency, which in turn determines its singularity. We can imagine a spiral form in its every circular movement, which determines its becoming partially from the past circular movements, which still extend their effects as ideas and impressions. This image corresponds to the soul. What is called the soul is the capacity of coming back to itself in order to know itself and determine itself. So, I thought that was a pretty crazy quote because in this few lines he manages to link a technical type of thinking to an organic process to the way an AI might be programmed to incorporate mistakes as contingencies and then create from this a description of the soul. So I might be working on this quote for quite some time. Um, I'm going to show a little um, bit of a video of an installation, but I just, as I'm on to quotes, I have another quote. This one is not about such big topic maybe, but it, it brings in this idea that I am attached to about um, cultural techniques and how forms such as a door, a window, a piece of, a, pa a page that turns, all of those can uh, help us construct how we understand reality um, and we could call them cultural techniques. So I thought a lot about doors in this exhibition which I had at Vitti de Vit. in fact Daphne was the director at the time. So this is a quote, it says, discussing doors, opening as it were a passage into a new understanding of doors may demonstrate how cultural techniques consist of chains of operations, including body techniques, which makes it possible to conceive of image spaces as constituted by virtual media operations. Maybe it's possible to define the epoch of bourgeois architecture as the epoch of the door handle. By virtue of the latch, the door is a tool that demands to be operated by the hand of its user. So, 
we can just think about that, about how something like a door also is like a gate and it's like a circuit and it tells you who's in and who's out. And it, more than that, it helps you understand the concept or it maybe even invites the concept to arise that there's an in and an out and some people are in and some people are out. So anyways, in this uh, exhibition, I'll show you a little video. Oopsie. Um, I made a page turning machine which turned the pages of a magazine that I made and the magazine was about doors and windows and all these concepts about doors and windows and pages and half of the exhibition was live cameras looking at the exhibition and the other half was a place you would sit and watch what the cameras were seeing. Sometimes you'd see yourself or your friends who have come to the exhibition. So I'll just play two short clips and that will be it. And there's some sound to it. So everything you see on the video monitors in this images was simply exactly what was happening in that moment and the camera, seven live cameras uh, feeding to it and quite a, a few simple robotic things as well like these shutters that moved and blinds that moved. It starts with a very fast slideshow and that's just how it is so we have a very fast slideshow. <laughs>
doors are, of course, not naturally in the gallery. They're all part of the installation. And there's a lot of references to many different things. I'll just show you my favorite part. That's the backstage. Okay. Thank you.